Hi guys, welcome to episode three. Uh, I'm glad that the series has been met with such a positive um, response. People getting in on it, commenting, joining in. It's what it's all about. This hobby is very aggressive with one another and off. And it's nice to be able to build people up rather than tear them down to help people out without necessary judgment. Okay, we might take the piss out of you a little bit, particularly if you've not engaged, engaged your common sense bone. But it's all in jest and fun, so don't anybody take it personally or spit your dummy out, you know, because it's not, it's not meant in that vein. But this hobby, you go on the forums, keyboard warriors and dickheads everywhere just wanting to have a pop. And I'm too volatile, so in old age I'm starting to realise that I need to start steering clear of them and it's a shame because you know I know that I could probably help people out but you probably know yourselves being part of the reptile culture you run the risk when you're a member of these groups and these forums you ask a question as a noob and, and you just get oh, untold piles of shit and it's it's unfair you know so I mean today's episode we were asked a question by a guy who wants to be referred to as Mr Crawlings and he has his own uh, channel um, so yeah I'll try and find a link for that and share it I'm not a dick so yeah he's a Triblinotus breeder which is the crocodile skinks red eye croc skinks new guinea croc skinks two of my favourite skink species the ace anybody who likes tribs good stuff the reason I picked what Mr Crawlins asked was once I could work out the question by the way dude you need to work out on question structs I had to read for five minutes just to work out what it was you wanted I mean I'm not having a go it's just it is what it is like I'm not what's he want i've worked it out in the end and it's an interesting question which is why i'm addressing it also you're a more experienced keeper and obviously just dealing with beginners is going to be boring so i want to try and help somebody who's like my peer you know maybe me make a decision where you want to go from my experience what would be good choices so he, he basically said i'll do a truncated version if you don't mind because i'm not reading all that there's too much of it um that uh is no interest particularly in boids. Boids are the group that contains boas and pythons. He is interested in colubrids, which are the non-venomous and rear-fanged snakes, and it's a massive family. And oh God, and it's got subfamilies and bloody all sorts. And it's um, it's a big old group, and it contains everything we see in the hobby that's not a boa or a python. Yeah, there's the hots, but we don't. I'm I'm not a hot keeper. I have no uh, interest in hots. I know nothing about hots. I, yeah, I know Latin names and what things are, but as far as husbandry goes, not a dicky bird. Only what I've read in a book, and only what you've read in a book does not count as experience. Uh, you know, you've got to have kept stuff to be able to comment on it. I think. Um, so the three species he cited as being interested in were um, the Cribos. And I note that he put Kribos rather than Indigos, so they will be the South American versions, which are Drymarcon Caraes Caraes and Drymarcon Caraes uh, Melanorus, uh, which are the Yellowtail and Blacktail, respectively. Stunning snakes. Excellent choice. The False Water Cobras, which are Hydrodynastes Gigas. Again, there's no problem there. They are nice. Very nice. And Alafe Carinata, which he referred to as the Chinese King Rat. I prefer to call it the stinking goddess or stinker just because it seems ruder <laughs> um I, I i think it's fitting as well for the species so i'll talk about them a little bit first and then maybe recommend some of the other larger impressive colubrids that you could maybe consider um that you potentially hadn't thought of um and yeah just a bit of a segue from 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 where you are and it, hopefully it's a discussion now if anybody else has got suggestions please feel free to comment what it might do is lead to other questions that we can address in another episode um i won't stand for um arseholes on the channel at all so if it isn't constructive don't put it if anybody's going to get chippy or shirty or arsy it'll be me uh, if you don't like it leave um so i as long as you're, you're supporting and building somebody up and their knowledge then you can be as long as it's constructive and it can be construed as being constructive it's all good and we'll keep it going 
uh, I don't mind a bit of debate, but if it starts spilling over into silliness for the sake of it, it the comments will just be deleted. Simple as that. Um, so first off, to tackle uh, Kribos, I wish that I had a Kribo in to be able to do our series. The problem, as you may well realise yourself, is the availability of Kribos is crap. And their origin isn't always clear. They're a bit of a nightmare to be able to find another one to pair up. Um, depending on where you are, of course. I don't know if this situation is any different in the US. What you've got to forgive me is my knowledge is solely based on the UK market, not even the EU market, and certainly not the American market. So if Americans have got input regarding the availability of Kribos, then cool, go for it. To put uh, lay a marker down for us here, the last Doncaster show, or the one before I went to, there was an Irish dude there with a five and a half foot blacktail Kribo, which is Dry Mark on Correus Melanoris, and I think that was 350 quid. So, that's your ballpark. We're looking at 350s, 450s, 500s, because they come far bigger than this. The Yellowtails, particularly the nominate form Correus Correus, they are big snakes, they're nine feet and built like tanks. And then the, the blacktails are seven and a half, eight feet easily. Um, these are huge colubrids, some of the largest um, colubrids going, to be honest, in mass and size. They're, they're very impressive snakes. Um, but they are far, far cheaper than their North American cousin, which is Dry Mark on Correus Cooperi, the Florida Indigo, which everybody and their dog would like to get hold of but can't. There's huge complications with breeding the Indigos and they are, yeah, they're just renowned for being a pain in the ass. Uh, you can breed them once, try breeding them twice, that's where you come unstuck. The South American stuff doesn't have the same reputation, so you probably find that you'd be more successful attempting to try and breed uh, that species. Uh, as far as care goes, they feed incredibly well. They're not particularly picky about their humidity levels to shed their skin. Uh, they shed with, with minimum fuss. So you made reference to the high humidity and everything else. In actual fact, I probably think that you're not going to have too much of an issue. Um, they are not a particularly difficult species to rear. The breeding can be slightly more problematic and they're incredibly keen on other snakes to eat. So make sure they're matched for size would be my advice if you're going to introduce them for breeding trials. The Hydrodynasties, the False Water Cobra, superb snake, South American Brazilian smooth snake, um, they are nowhere near as humid as you think they should be. Um, there is this weird juxtaposition when we have animals in captivity versus where they're from. For example, green anaconda, Eunectes murinus. We put that in this boggy, humid, tropical, um, just steam room of a, of a viv, which replicates where it's from and it blisters and it gets fungal infections in its skin. We can't do it. This is where this, this, this crossroads occurs and it happens with most water snakes. They like to bathe, they like to soak, but when they come out, they like to dry off. If they don't, they lose skin quality and they will blister out. The same is true for the European water snakes, genus Natrix, North American water snakes, genus Nerodia. So this goes on. Anacondas, Eunectes, so this is where our problems begin to start. So false water cobra, a water bowl that I can climb in without making all the water bowl, water bowl leave the water bowl and go all over the floor and blow my tank. So a decent bowl that they can get in and have a soak and then come out and dry off. Also, they are further south than you appreciate. They do not like hot temperatures, maximum of 28 degrees. The Kribos, I'll just go back to them because I forgot to mention it, they're quite happy at between 30 and 31. But the, the falsies, they don't like it much hotter than 28. King rats, king, they are cannibals. So again, be careful. Um, that I think that they are fabulous snakes. I think the patination transition that they go through from beginners, from sorry, not from beginners, from babies where they are saddled to as adults where their overall base color is black with a yellow dot on every scale, 
beautiful yellow and black heads, that weird te teardrop pupil that they've got. They're superb. They feed well, but they are quite standoffish. They do have a very <laughs> active post-anal gland, which will produce a very smelly musk, um, and hence why they're called stinking goddesses. Um, a quoted size upwards of eight feet. Uh, they are from more than just China, though. They are from... Um, North Vietnam, Taiwan, and Japan. So you've got a fair range there. Um, and it's sort of like that halfway house between temperate and tropical. Um, I've found them to be particularly unneedy when it comes to shedding their skin. So again, you might overdo it with the humidity without realizing. Uh, 28, 29 degrees, fairly regular uh, con um, diet. They've got quite a fast metabolism. In fact, all three have. This is where we're gonna come unstuck. You made reference to it in your question, which was, that they have fast metabolisms and this shit everywhere. I concur. Um, they do. They will take great pleasure in taking your wonderful clean tank and just jettisoning it everywhere, across the glass, on the ceiling. You think, how the f did you do that? And um, yeah, so try not to have too an elaborate a viv. You, all right, okay, you can have an elaborate viv for maybe the first month and then you're gonna get dog tired of having to reconstruct it, scrub it, and sort it out every week. It will become a simple viv very quickly. Um, I defy anybody who keeps any of these big colubrids to do any different because they're just shitting machines. It's the truth. Um, those three species you've cited are partic not particularly problematic as far as husbandry goes for an experienced keeper. Obviously, I've got to make mention of the fact that Hydrodynasties is rear fanged. There is the propensity for reactions. You claim that you don't react, that's good. But for everybody else who's watching, don't just jump in with a false water cobra. Do some research on bites and, uh, you know, don't have one if you suffer with anaphylaxia when it comes to being bitten by anything else. Other species that you could maybe consider, which would be the step on, they're going to challenge you, they're going to face off against you, they will try and kick your ass more than likely. Um, there is Chironius. Uh, Carinatus, which is called Machete Zervain. There is um, Spoloitz Pilatus, which is the tiger rat snake. And there is, as I knew them, Seuss Pacillinotus, but they've now changed it to, what they changed it to? Phyro, Phy, Phynonax, Phynonax Pacillinotus. Taxonomist, such brilliant people, making my life more difficult. But I know them as Seuss, so I'll just call them Seuss Psilonotus, and that is a tropical lyar or puffing snake. Um, these are South American, varying degrees of uh, arboreal tendencies, incredibly standoffish, incredibly aggressive, incredibly pretty, and big. The smallest is the Seuss at six feet, and then <sighs> Spoloites can be anywhere up to nine feet, and the Chironius up to nine feet. These are big snakes. They're going to need large, tall tanks. So maybe the six foot wide, as you quoted, but we're maybe coming three or four foot tall, two foot deep, plenty of branches and logs for them to loll and climb around on. Incredibly interesting snakes. That would be something that I would potentially consider. Uh, another species which is close to my heart is the uh, Ridley's Cave Racer. Personally, what I think to be one of the prettiest of the striped tails, and it's the least complexly patterned, and that's Orthriophis tenuris ridleyi, seven feet, uh, very active, hunter style, superb snake. Um, I, I think realistically, if we're talking, you, you're ticking boxes when you were making your question, which was, I've got the viv, I've got the stat, I'm going to be able to do the research, these are the species I'm interested in, what do you think? Great choices. There's a few more. I don't think you'll go far wrong. Uh, the larger collier breeds, by, by uh, virtue of their size, actually aren't problematic feeders. Um, but they are very robust personalities that may stand off and react with quite a large amount of territoriality within the viv, uh, depending on how often you work with them. It depends on how interested you are in making something a pet and whether it's just a display animal. The pet material, realistically, would be Gymarchon and Hydrodynasties. They would be the two, so the Kribo and the uh, the False Water Cobra. The the King Rat or Stinker may be very standoffish, and the ones I suggested, admittedly, could be very standoffish as well. 
But if you're going to keep an intermediate snake, you're going to move on to that next level, you want that slightly more advanced collier breed that maybe is going to uh, make an honest keeper out of you, then there's nothing wrong with having a snake that's a little bit grumpy. You know, everyone makes such a fuss about things being tame. I couldn't give a shit about a snake being tame. Is it healthy? Is it feeding? Is it happy? Am I meeting the challenge of keeping it? You should always try and test your boundaries. Now, don't go off the deep end and push yourself too far. Admit what your capabilities are. But if you don't challenge yourself, you're never going to learn. If you're a royal breeder and you have only kept and bred royals for 20 years, are you an expert reptile keeper? If you've kept a multitude of different species, bred a multitude of different species, cocked up and fucked up the care of a multitude of different species and gone, right, that's gone wrong. How am I going to put that right? How do you think I know that anaconda's blister or that something else? I've done it so you don't have to. People don't take your words for it. Arrogance is a wonderful thing. Oh, yeah, well, I'm going to do what I want to do anyway, whatever, mate. But I'm trying to give you honest advice in as much as I have made cock-ups in the past, over the 27 years I've been doing it. I've been very fortunate to be able to keep a huge amount of different stuff. I've not always been successful, I've not always kept it well, but every time I've done something I've learned and I'm a strong enough character to admit when I've cocked something up. So um, push yourself, make sure that you're giving yourself the best possible chance. Viv, control equipment, heaters, making sure that everything is just as it should be. We want to remove as much human error as possible. And then it's just down to environmental and social. If we've only got one animal, there's no social, then it's just environmental. You know what I mean? We're trying to tick boxes to make sure that we do stuff. And all you've got to do is you've just got to be better at ticking boxes when we start moving up the difficulty chain. Is this done? Is that done? Have I left it alone? Am I stressing it out? Is it in a high traffic area? Blah, 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 blah. And it's those ticks that are going to be able to make you more successful as you move along. I know that's a bit of a ramble, I know it was a bit long, um, but it was it was an interesting one, and I like big colubrids, so I like just chatting about them generally. If anybody's got anything to add, please jump in, make a suggestion, if you've kept them, maybe a couple of notes on how you found them to be, temperatures you kept them at, etc. This is a community, I want it to be a community feel, um, and like I say, let's just keep enjoying it, uh, and hopefully, as long as I get time, it won't be one of these tomorrow, but it will be a beginner intermediate or advanced depending on what species i decide to cover tomorrow so uh yeah keep your po keep posted on the on the uh, channel and visit www.snakesandadders.co.uk to see what we're all about cheers